Well, hey everyone, and welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG. Today we have a deck tech and a format tech for you uh, with the help of Reddit user Mall Zenith. Uh, thank you, Mall, for helping me put together some scripting on this, and I've really appreciated your posts that uh, kind of highlighted this idea for me. But without further ado, let's talk about this idea. I want to introduce to you all a format that's been spoken about a decent amount, but really unexplored in any competitive capacity up to now. That format is called Commoner, specifically Commoner Blitz, and will be one of the many formats that you can compete in inside events at the upcoming calling in the US in Vegas, uh, as well as the other locations. You can see me in Vegas, uh, hoping to meet a lot of you guys as we go into uh, the calling in Las Vegas. So this will be one of the side events, uh, and Commoner is a format where only common and token rarity cards can be used in your deck. The idea of this format comes from Magic the Gathering's Popper format, which is one of my favorite ways to play Magic the Gathering. This format was created by fans to provide uh, where decks are universally affordable for all players who want to experience this high game of skill level without the money as a factor. And in Magic the Gathering, it's an incredibly interactive format as well. So if you want to dive into constructed flesh and blood and don't want to worry too much about assembling the optimized deck list with expensive majestics and legendaries, this might just be the format for you. That's not to say that commoner blitz is like a gimped version of regular blitz. Because only commons are available in this format, heroes are forced to build their decks differently rather than simply swapping out high rarity cards for low rarity ones. Explosive turns fueled by situationally powerful rare and majestic cards just don't exist in this format. So games tend to be a little bit slower. Choosing which cards you want to use to block is also a highly emphasized skill here in this format, as the average blocking power of cards is lower and you don't have the life gain pieces or strong defense equipment to help mitigate the damage from certain hits. The following two decks are on the simpler side, but I believe that they illustrate the breadth of the deck types available in Commoner. We'll take a look at an aggro Ira list, a deck that aims to put as much pressure on as possible to win, and Stonewall Bravo, a highly defensive deck that simply outlasts the opponent with a hammer to the face every turn. Okay, so let's talk about Aggro Ira. For anyone who's played Blitz competitively, Ira is either the bane of anything fun, and you're like me and you hate her, or it's the hero that you're running. Her strength lies in her simplicity. The second attack you perform every turn will get one additional power. This may seem innocent, but the best Ira decks will use this bonus to push that power on key attacks with on-hit effects over a multiple of three, making them way more difficult to block profitably. In Commoner, Ira doesn't have the defense tools that she usually has to stay alive and chip away at the opponent's health, so we're forced to go on the offensive if we want to win. With her ability and stubby hammerers, we can essentially double the damage of her weaker attack, like her signature Whirling Mist Blossom, to create insane turns with multiple 4-6 to six damage attacks that the opponent is forced to throw everything they have to blocking. This deck focuses on chaining together as many hits as possible, regardless of what you draw, and you probably get at least three or four hits per turn. There's a lot of cards that say go again in this deck, but the tricky part lies in how you choose to sequence them. As some general advice, try to line up your second attack cards like Leg Tap or Soul Bead Strike to make them harder to block effectively. In the example above, we swung for 19 damage plus an additional one damage for every attack that hit before Salt the Wound was played. So you can see, it's very easy to go wide. If an opponent manages to block you, preventing you from gaining go again, you can use Snapdragon Scalers or Razor Reflex to keep the combo going and push the damage through even the strongest of defenses. If you ever draw one of your combo pieces without the other, prioritize pitching it or banking it in your arsenal for a later turn where you can line it up. When you're playing Ira, make sure that you plan out your turn so that any non-attack action cards such as using Heart and Cross Strap, Stubby Hammerers, or Minnowism are used at the beginning of the combat chain. Any interruptions in your attack once you start attacking will close the combat chain, locking you out of some bonus damage. While Bravo is pretty popular in Classic Constructed, he tends to be on the weaker side in Blitz due to how slow he tends to play. Fortunately, in Commoner, that's right up his alley. 
Bravo has a ton of defense tools available to him and the reduced average defense per card in Commoner means that the chip damage that he does with Anathos is going to be much more potent. Our goal with this deck is to heavily block on our opponent's turn and then swing in with Anathos, eventually whittling our opponent down until they have no cards in their deck or are one well-placed swing away from death. To do this, we'll be running a few key sets of cards, a full set of the cheap generic defense reactions, Fate Foreseen and Sync Below. We'll add it to the red and blue versions of Unmovable. While this card is pretty strong against bigger swings, it's not very good against classes that go wide, so we'll skip out on the yellow version. Finally, we have the key card of the deck, Stonewall Confidence. This card gives all of our three cost cards an additional two to four defense, making it hilariously easy to block out an entire turn with one or two cards. The rest of this deck, you guessed it, costs three or more and most pitch for three, letting us pay for Anthos using a single card. Most of the attack actions we run are pretty much only there as filler to block and to pitch, but the few yellow and red ones are options to play if necessary. Because Bravo is one of the few heroes that has some sort of on-demand way to push through damage, we can use any turn where we're not blocking to activate Bravo's ability and hit the opponent with a nigh unblockable chunk of damage, usually with a useful debilitating effect to boot. Depending on who you're playing against, try to save certain crush attacks like Crush the Weak or Choke Slam to really disable the opportunity for your opponent to get over your defenses. Inevitably, you'll whittle them down to a point where they'll be begging you to end it. Commoner seems like an amazing format with a ton of creative options to play the game of flesh and blood. I've always said that the commons and fab are the most powerful and fun to use cards, and this format really proves it. I hope to see you at the side event in Vegas, and afterwards we plan to run occasional commoner format armory events in the Discord server. Let me know your favorite commoner deck in the comments below, or a card that you think is especially powerful for a common format. I'll leave the post by Mal Zenith as well as the deck list in the comment section as well. If you want to support the channel and have access to a Discord server where we host events and discuss the intricacies of this wonderful game, head on over to patreon.com slash kitchen table TCG. You now get $5 off one armory event a month, which now makes all the other perks of the Patreon free. But most importantly, thanks for watching and liking the videos, commenting, and learning this game alongside with me. As usual, remember to be kind to the people around you, and we'll see you again next video.